All right, guys, real quick, I just wanted to let you know, we are doing another VIP giveaway. This time, we will be giving 10 lucky winners a Hush Mountain Ops stack system. What does that include? That includes a tub of our signature Mountain Ops Hush Ignite Trail Packs. That will also include a tub of our Hush Yeti and a tub of our Hush Enduro. All you have to do to enter to win is to text Hush Ops, always one word, to 29071 from today until Friday the 16th, and your name will be put in the hat to win a Hush Stack. Also, from today until April 25th, Mountain Ops is gonna be offering 25% off and free shipping on all of our signature series Mountain Ops products. All you have to do is use the code HUSH25 at checkout and you will save 25% and get free shipping. Plus, guys, this is the most important thing, I think. For every product sold in this promo, Mountain Ops is gonna be donating 20 mils to families in need. 20 mils for one order. So guys, help us donate some mils, get some great product, and be entered to win your own Hush stack system. Now on to the video, Logan. Roll it out. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're doing something a little newer on the channel, but it's something we're gonna do a lot more. So we are up here in Bellevue, Idaho with our good friends from First Light, and we're gonna do a conservation project today. We're gonna be planting sagebrush saplings for future feed for the deer and elk. Um, this area burns quite a bit, as you can see. Um, so a lot, a lot of this stuff isn't great healthy protein or food for, for deer and elk, so we're gonna uh, plant a bunch of sagebrush. I think. 1,200 saplings, I think, maybe? That seems like a lot. I don't know, let's go talk to the guys that actually know what's going on. Um, I don't have much to say, I'm not the expert. I'll defer to Brandon, but I'm glad everybody can make down, get our soft office hands a little callus, plant some uh, plant some brush, and hopefully help the uh, deer we just spooked out of the canyon on the way in. Yeah, uh, so first things first, um, the BLM, so we're planning on BLM, um, they definitely wanted me to pass along that they are very thankful for what you guys are doing. Um, obviously, we've seen there's been a fire here a couple years ago, um, and down low we are seeing some regeneration of sagebrush, which is great to see. Ideally, I think we're going to try to go plant up in this pocket. Um, it should be protected. It's going to be kind of a north-facing slope. So um, I think our total number here is about 1,220 plants. So we'll probably run across some uh, mountain sage in Wyoming. But ideally, what we're going to want to do is bury these so this root plug is below below the dirt. We'll dig it. Plant it, make sure it's straight. We don't want to have a J root. We want to make sure the roots are straight up and down. And then hopefully we have enough energy stored in here and then they're gonna take off. And hopefully in three to five years, these things will be mature enough and starting to produce seeds and expand. Got some, uh, some sagebrush, nursery sagebrush seedlings here. Not seedlings, I guess just baby plants. Proper term there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, getting ready to go plant. are planting these little mountain sage seedlings. And we're planting them because this whole area burnt. And when it did that, it burnt up all the native shrub life, which the wintering, primarily deer, really count on. Now it's burnt, all this invasive cheatgrass and medusa head are coming back strong and it prohibits that native shrubbery, the bitter brush and the sage from coming back. So this is just a little effort to plant these guys and give this winter range a chance to actually provide for those deer in the wintertime. This, I think it's year three. Um, the first year we did it, it was just a handful of us from work that met up with a larger group, just general volunteers from the community helping out IDFG. Um, another spot south of here. And after that, we really realized we could do more. And we actually, the company took it on to buy the seedlings themselves. 
and cover the whole cost of the project. So we've been doing that. I think we've done, this is the third or fourth planting we've done. Fire ripped through here a while ago and we're trying to bring back a little life to the canyon. Yeah, this is kind of your guys' backyard, eh? Yeah, we're just a couple miles from the office and yeah, it's a special place, man. We, we train dogs out here, we hike out here, we hunt out here and it feels kind of good to be able to get the hands dirty instead of just typing on the keyboard. Good to get out of the office. Oh yeah, for sure. Is that yours? Did you pull that out of there? Someone's got to do quality control around here. <laughs> Personally, that is not Kevy Sage approved right there. <laughs> how uh, how can the people at home get out and do something like this? Well, you know the the coolest thing is you can you can round up for conservation. That's what pays for programs like these. So if you go to FirstLight.com, make a purchase. Um, there's an opportunity to uh, you know donate to some of the organizations such as BHA, you know TRCP, pheasants, things like that. Um, that actually put their money where their mouth is. So we're teaming up with Idaho Fish and Game and then um, the BLM today to, to make this happen. And um, if you want more information, you can check out FirstLight.com. There's a page on there for conservation, um, and folks can get involved. I think it's really cool to be able to not just uh, talk the talk but walk the walk. Well, guys, we just wrapped up planting just over 1,200 sagebrush saplings. I'm excited to come back here in a few years and see if see what this country looks like. Hopefully that'll take and uh, we'll have some good deer habitat for the winter. My name is Brandon Tees. I'm a regional habitat biologist for Idaho Fish and Game out of the Magic Valley region. As a regional habitat biologist, um, I'm one of four in the Magic Valley region. So I, I see oversee the uh, south uh, east portion of the Magic Valley and I'm over in charge of a couple of WMAs, wildlife management areas for the state and then I'm also in charge of rehab in the Magic Valley. So collecting seed from bitterbrush, sagebrush primarily and then we'll work with the BLM um, and other conservation groups and we, we work together and put sagebrush and bitterbrush back into the ground. So today we planted uh, 1220 uh, mountain sagebrush on the BLM. This is a very important um, transition and winter habitat for, for mule deer and elk. And when we showed up, there were some mule deer sitting right where we just planted those. Um, and we had a fire come through here two years ago, the Sharps fire. And what happened is sagebrush, once it's burnt, it doesn't, it doesn't regenerate. Um, so what we have to do is hopefully if it goes back, if the fire goes through fast enough, it doesn't harm the, uh, the seeds that are in the soil. But if it, does, if it is hot, it'll kill uh, all the seeds as well. So to bring it back, there's a couple options. You can either aerial seed it over snow. That usually does okay. Um, and if we don't, we have to come in with these seedling plugs and we manually plant them. And hopefully they'll take, we shoot for ideally 30% and it's all moisture dependent, right? Yeah. So if we don't have any moisture and we're planting in a dry soil, the survival is poor. It's just, this project, you know, it's it's from collecting seed to getting planted, it's like a two year project, and then we put it in the ground. And we we can't help, and what, what Mother Nature's gonna do is what Mother Nature's gonna do. So hopefully if all things uh, go well, you know, in three to five years, these things are gonna start producing seed and start spreading across the landscape. So if you guys wanna help and volunteer and do projects like this, you can look on our website. Um, we have seven regions here in Idaho. You can uh, contact our volunteer coordinator and see if there's any projects that are coming up or contact one of the habitat biologists if there's any of these projects that are, you know, coming up in the future. Or if you're, uh, uh, you know, a conservation organization or just even a private person that, uh, you know, wants to get involved, has some money and has some volunteer out manpower, yeah, we can get a project going. That's how we, that's how we got here today. I reached out to, to First Light and yeah, we, I explained the situation, how it goes, and he was all on board and we collect the seeds, we do the orders and yeah, in two years, here we go. We're out putting sagebrush seedlings in the dirt. Sweet, man. All right, guys, we just finished up with planting, kind of regrouping out the truck here and uh, reflecting a little bit about how the day went. Good times. I think we all got a little sunburn today, which was nice. First real nice day of the spring. Ford Van Fossen is First Light's Director of Conservation, so he's going to kind of run through just a couple other components about kind of the First Light conservation culture that they've built over the years and how this particular project ties into it. Yeah, so brush for bucks is kind of, you know, we, we talk about, our conservation work in sort of three silos or pillars. You know, one of those is definitely the on the ground work, actually doing stuff, actually getting out on the hills, putting sagebrush in and, and sort of doing that habitat work ourselves. But there's, there's definitely uh, more to it than that. You know, the other large pillar is what we call advocacy and education. So that's, 
you know, as simple as honestly throwing out an Instagram post about legislation that's coming down the pipe, about regulation changes, whatever, kind of getting the good word out to our customer base um, and, and getting them informed so that they can make comments, so that they can call representatives, kind of whatever whatever needs to be done. Utilizing our voice as much as we can, I think is, is still one of the most important things we do. And then the last pillar there is, uh, you know, what we call funding conservation, basically. And that takes kind of a number of, a number of uh of forms too you know it could be as simple as sending sending a, a kit to a ducks unlimited banquet to help them raise some money or it could be as complicated as you know for example our roundup for conservation which allows folks to add a dollar to some of our main conservation partners uh at checkout or as big as a program we just launched called camo for conservation and, and basically what that entails is a percentage of sales from every uh, every sale of our brand new Spectre whitetail pattern will be directed back to the National Deer Association, which is kind of the leading whitetail conservation group and folks we've come to to work with and and trust and, and really believe in uh, in believe in their work. So that's kind of the the over and under. Like I said, there's there's the work on the ground, there's the advocacy, advocacy and education, and there's uh, there's generating funds for conservation and conservation groups. Real quick, what I wanted to say is we've always done a fairly good job of donating money to different conservation groups. I think the biggest thing for a lot of people, maybe a lot of you guys out there, maybe you don't have a lot of money to donate, but I think one thing that we can all do is, like Brian was saying, is get boots on the ground, get out and help in your local local places. If it's the fishing game, the BLM, we're going to link some stuff down below that you can go to and look up. Uh, Brandon talked about it earlier, but I think that's the biggest thing is getting people excited about getting out and helping, and that's kind of what today was and uh the future events will be kind of a blend of both so it's just kind of what we wanted to bring attention to that i think anybody and everybody should get out and try to help uh that's that's our conservation initiative of the day logan's gonna get out of here and go back home casey and i are going fishing tomorrow though yeah gonna crush fish so we'll have to hire a new camera guy tonight <laughs> we would have a cool fishing video but hmm. <laughs> <laughs> somebody's got to go home and color easter eggs color easter eggs logan <laughs> Explain to us that. Bunch of haters. <laughs> Bunch of haters. Oh, anyways. We'll see you on the next video, guys. Nailed it. Good job, boys.